What is going on, everybody? I am Alex Conkin, ring announcer for Magnum Wrestling, and you are watching Drinking at Moe's. Drinking at that Moe's, where we talk about the pros and pro wrestling in the Midwest while sipping on some brews with blessed beers and wrestling. That's my scene. Death matches and Lucha Libre, it's all so mean. I'm a straight up smart goofball, not no kiss ass. I stand tall when it comes to wrestling. I'm the king. I know every move, every fling. Get ready for a wild time. We're drinking at Moe's, where we don't quit. Drinking at Moe's, that's where it's at like a power bomb. We hit hard, never flat. Fucking right, we're living the dream. Talking about wrestling. All right, everybody, taking time out before we get this show started. That uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Drink the Mose be a brand ambassador for their clothing line. They got good stuff they got t-shirts they got hoodies they got beans they got lots of great stuff encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone live their best self and hey it's something i try to live every day now be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order use the code drinking at mo's get 10 percent off and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's fucking go. All right, everybody. Welcome to Drinking Mo's. Big Mo here. You know the drill by now. YouTube, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. Because YouTube's algorithm is a pain in the ass. We are most places to find audio podcasts too. Today, I'm excited to have with me because I love talking to people from all aspects of the wrestling business. Ring announcer for Magnum Wrestling here in Omaha, Alex, how you doing? Good, Big Mo. How are you? I'm excited. Oh, I can't complain. You know, did my commentary debut last night. I did hear about that. Bit, bit of a scorcher, but hey, it was fun. I got to, you know, call the match for Cheeseburger. I got to yeah. do my little Stone Cold entrance. I even, I even saved one of the cans. Hey, look at that. Oh, that's my cool. little memento from the show. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that was a really good show yesterday. Glad that it all turned out really well. Oh, yeah. No, it was a solid show. There was a couple hiccups, but hey, that that's what happens with that's... wrestling shows. They're bound to happen. Yeah. But, you know, everything pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. There, it's going to happen, I mean, especially with it being, you know, the very first one. And I mean, yeah, like you said, you know, it happens in our world of wrestling. There's going to be a mistake. You just, you know, pretty much recover from it. That's the way oh, that, yeah. you know, yeah, I was we were, told. We were able to recover from it. And, you know, me being the goofball that I am, the Pat McAfee of the uh, <laughs> and the the commentary team, let's just say once it's all edited together. You're you're not gonna want to miss some of my zingers. Oh, I'm looking forward to that for sure. For sure. <laughs> Lord knows I do enough of them just sitting in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I remember being in a crowd of some wrestling shows and you being there, and I'd be like, "It's that dude." Yep. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it's my but goal it was... to get. It's my goal to get somebody cracking at every damn show. I got every. Every, time. every one yeah i remember just sitting you know i think we'd be like maybe like one row across or whatever and i i just like turn to my friends and be like did you hear what he said did you hear what he said and we just we all started laughing and shit and i was like that's cool oh yeah hell i even got luther uh cracking at that uh collision taping yeah <laughs> oh yeah dude it was it <laughs> I got the inspiration for it right to uh, that dynamite before and mm. Tony Storm's little comment about slapping her tits off. And then I just yelled it. I watched that episode back and it happened during one of those damn picture in picture moments. But I saw oh, the really? way he reacted in it and I'm like, yeah. there it is. That's got when him. it happened. <laughs> I did that. 
I made him laugh. Yep, that was that was awesome. You know, <laughs> getting to get somebody cracking on uh, live national television. Oh, dude, that's the best. Oh, that's oh, yeah. the best. When you get oh, them yeah. to crack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, first thing I like to talk with everybody with is what got you started as a fan? And then what got you deciding to make that leap into the business? So I've actually been a fan since I was eight years old. And funny how that all started for me becoming a fan. I didn't even know what, you know, WWE professional wrestling was. I believe it was in second, third grade. And we had a new kid coming into school. And I mean, this kid was just had John Cena. He wore yeah. a hat. He had a t-shirt. He was wearing jean shorts, just like John <laughs> Cena. And I just thought, you know, the designs of shirt stuff, that was really cool. So uh, he had a birthday party, I think like a couple weeks later, wearing just everything WWE John Cena specifically, because that was his favorite. And so I asked him, I was like, who's this guy on the shirt? And he's like, oh, it's John Cena. Well, who's John Cena? Never heard of him, nothing. So then he would walk me to the room, and I mean, just everything plastered in his room, the bed sheets, the walls, playing on his TV, just everything. And I was like, well, this looks really cool. So then, you know, stayed the night at his place for one time, and we just watched WWE, and he showed me what it was. And after that, fell in love with it. And I was like, this is really cool. So I fell in love with it ever since uh, eight years old. And uh, I just knew a couple of years into it, I just knew I want to do, I want to do this. You know, it's, it's a dream to be involved in anything professional wrestling, whether it's commentator, ring announcer, wrestler, ring crew, anything. Wanted to be involved in it. And to actually say that, you know, I'm pretty much living in a dream right now. It's it's unreal. Eight year old Alex would definitely not believe it. I think he'd be <laughs> like, "You're full. You're full of crap. There's no way." Oh yeah, hell, anything with my podcast, it's been that way. Hell, if you would have told me and hell anywhere growing up that one day I'd be commentating a show with a guy that's performed in the tokyo dome and madison square garden and stuff i would have been like you're full of shit right yeah no kidding and then yeah and then you know you still had just that press in your head like you know this is really cool and take it in soak up all that moment because- oh yeah most definitely and you know what going into that i know hell friday this last as a recording friday on my way home from work i'm like Good God, these butterflies are really fucking going right now, man. Like, I was just like, and I would tell my wife, I'm like, the butterflies are really going. And she's like, why? I'm like, you know, it's just like when you, you, you always dreamed of being a wrestler. And then you find out that, you know, with some injuries that, you know, maybe the in ring aspect isn't the, route that I'd be able to go. Right. And then you and start then you can... thinking after the podcast, shit, maybe maybe commentating might be my deal. Mm-hmm. And then actually getting the chance to do that and then to not only okay, because I joked about this yesterday that you don't give a stone cold Steve Austin fan an entrance at a wrestling show and expect him to not do the not Crash you know, know the beers. Bring out the beers and clean them together and start chugging them down. Yeah. Yeah. You don't it, you cannot expect a stone cold fan not to do that. Exactly. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, those uh those butterflies, yeah, they're uh when I very first started, it was actually at uh July of last year, mm. the little small rascular show, and just sit in the back, like when I woke up, you know, I'm excited, this is really cool, I can't believe it. But then once you start getting your stuff on and you just sit there for a minute, and you're just like, you feel it and you're just like, okay, palms sweaty and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you walk out the curtain and you're just like, you know, you still got a little bit of the butterflies, but not as much because now your focus is to do what you do. And so I'm not going to lie. There's times, you know, I've only been doing this for 
every show I've been starting January. Um, so I'll say about a year since I first started, but doing it full time, it's been about eight months. And dude, I still get butterflies. I still oh, get yeah. butterflies. I'll sit behind that curtain. Okay, we've got five minutes before we go out. Oh shit. Okay. Yep. So I'm just sitting there trying to like, you know, compose myself, do a little breathers and stuff. So you still get those butterflies. Oh, God, don't, yeah. it don't matter how long you do it. You're still going to get them. Hell, I think it was Road Warrior Animal that once said that, you know, if you get to a point where you're not getting those butterflies, it might be time to find something else to do. Yep, exactly. Because, hell, I remember the one time I did ring announcing for one match. Man, when I got told, hey, go to the back, blah, blah, blah. I somebody literally had to come back there and calm me down because I'm pacing back and forth like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. That was kind of me this last Sunday, too, because I was like, holy shit, this is actually happening. And they're yep. announcing me first. I don't like oh. them first. Ah. <laughs> oh, you went first? Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, it was something else but getting into some magnum wrestling because they have an exciting card coming up including one that we just passed this last weekend i believe it was the day before you know on saturday the day before the show i was on it was a brawl before fall and you know i gotta admit i've seen some pictures i've heard about the results because i was trying to settle myself the day before the show I was on. Yep. But I'm like, okay, this, it, this seemed like a pretty damn good show. It really, that main event, everybody was up on their feet. I mean, you know, Uriah coming out and then the lumber Mac, John McKenzie come everybody. I mean that the roof was just blowing off the place at the end of the night. It was unbelievable yes yeah, i mean like even, that, uh, oh go ahead even in the pre-show you know we just start you know you have some fans walking in and i mean even then the pre-show the pre-show was pretty crazy and got loud so that was it was definitely a rowdy night oh yeah and you know i have said some things about magnum before but hey i have to admit I can give credit where credit is due. The like the production alone at Magnum shows is like second to none in this area. And then you add to that the talent that they have there. Oh, you yeah. can't deny it. Absolutely not. Yeah, our production, it's each month it just gets better and better. We find new things to do. We add more stuff. But yeah, shout out to all the, the production crew. On a, a Magnum oh, yeah. Wrestling. Oh, yeah. From hell yourself with Ray announcing their, the commentators. You know, obviously when you're there live in the crowd, you don't get to hear that. But when you get to go watch it back, the commentary, that's what helps draw you in when you're not there yep. live. That's like you might not even be paying attention, but you hear the commentators reactions to the stuff and you're like, wait, what did I miss? Right. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Commentators play they play a big part too. Oh, definitely. And you know, coming up, I believe it's actually this next month. I mean, we're pretty much at the end of August, anyways, as of right now. But one of my personal favorite shows of the Magnum calendar, over the top. Now, for I mean, I would like to think that most people that will listen would uh understand that you know over the top kind of like a royal rumble yeah basically and i don't know something about the royal rumble at you know wwe's iteration like okay everybody likes wrestlemania the spectacle of it the biggest but show, there was right. just something about the royal rumble that always made it my favorite oh absolutely so, it just tra it just translated into the independence, you know the some of those shows like hell. There's been there's a couple promotions in the area that will do 
that sort of a match. And mm-hmm. much like WWE, it's like you never know who's going to pop up. No, You might see somebody coming back that you haven't seen months, maybe years. Yeah. I think it was, uh, I believe it was last year at Over the Top. Um, I was helping with production, and I didn't know who was going to show up. And I remember walking in, and I saw, I don't know if you remember him, Damien Saints. Mm. And I was just like, you're, I was like, what are you doing here? I'm in the battle Royal. I was like, no way. So it was pretty excited to see him because, you know, I haven't seen him since I believe 2021. I was going to say, I think the last time I had seen him before that night was actually against, I'm one to say Dan Severn. Yeah. At the uh, piggy in the bank. Yeah. Yep. I said, that was the last time I saw him. And then, uh, you know, we hadn't seen Bo got there in a while. And I know he came back at that one as well. Yep. So, hey, I I love that dude. Like, he's hip. Good Lord. Thinking about my commentary. Good Lord, you get me and him on commentary. Oh, you're going to need a parental oh. advisory on that damn thing. <laughs> oh, I can imagine that one. It'd be a pretty crazy commentary team, but in a good way. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, no, definitely. Now, what has been some of your favorite parts of working with Magnum? Because they've, since your start there, they've brought in some amazing people, some that, you know, have even been on national television. Hell, one that was just in Wembley Stadium yesterday. Yeah, it's... uh. It's uh, really cool because you get to like, you know, some of them, I used to see them on TV. Then being able to share a locker room with them, you know, obviously, you know, tell them, you know, I've been watching on TV, you know, get like sort of advice just in the business in general. Um, But it's really cool just to the people that you meet in the business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get back there. You get to meet some of them and I feel like the locker room is just the best part of it, being in the business, being back there with everybody. Oh, yeah. There's there's definitely that sense of camaraderie that, you know, I often credit as part of what helped me after I got back from the Navy. Because, you know, you have the camaraderie with the people you're serving with. And, you know, coming back into civilian life, it's not always the easiest thing. So right. when you find a group that has a similar camaraderie to it and they're welcoming you in, yeah, it's an awesome, awesome feeling. It is. It it truly is. Yeah. When I uh when I first started, it was just complete open arms. And I was like, this feels incredible. Oh yeah. Hell, I you know, kind of more national with some of the places I've covered, but I've had the same sort of thing with you know it's now running by pro wrestling ventures but warrior wrestling out of chicago like i interviewed the promoter and then he's like oh they're doing a stop in st louis you should come down i'm like me and my podcast it's like oh yeah i'm like okay wow and then, you know, get getting to share the same space with you know bronson reed jeff cobb Mike Bennett, uh, Lance Archer, getting Ooh, to play nice. a rib on Frank the Clown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that oh, that cool. was fun because they were trying to figure out where to put his name thing in front of, you know, where he was going to be. And there mm. happened to be this little cutout area, like right back here. And I'm like, I have an idea. They handed it to me. And right in that cutout area was a trash can, so I just put it right in front of the trash can. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. great! Oh, he got a he got, he had a funny reaction to that one. He did. Good. I don't I don't think he realized it was me that did it, but I mean, now he might. I don't know. I was say, yeah. Now then, like, watch he finds out eventually. That son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm I'm that goofball guy, but then 
the going back to the camaraderie part back when you know everything happened when uh my wife and i were expecting our twin girls and then they only made it a week before i knew it i had only posted hey i might be silent on thing was twitter for a while and then before i know it most of the damn crew there was reaching out seeing how i was doing i'm like Dude, I knew I loved you guys, but damn it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely definitely a fun thing when you get welcomed in like that. And Absolutely. well, now over the top, I'm trying to remember where it goes from there with Magnum. Because I know they, I mean, they might not have it announced on social media, but I know they they have at least the show names and stuff planned out for a while. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, hell Magnum, like we said, production talent, you know, you, you can't deny Magnum wrestling at all. No. Now there is a fun little thing that we are actually breaking news here on this episode. Yeah, holy shit. Oh, but shit. you will be joining me on commentary for the November 10th Fight Against Suicide Wrestling Show. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, with that day, my birthday. That, so, gotta that, make it telling me, yeah. extra special that day. Yeah. Hell, maybe the crashing of the beers thing, like we did make hell. Maybe I'll have to bring in extra that night and Fuck yeah. you and me in there. Oh yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we we got to got to do it for your birthday. That's but right. you know, I'm hearing you know we had some uh, announcements made last night about a couple of the matches. And, you know, it's already shaping up to be a solid show. And, you know, I believe that the, uh, believe that the fully edited show will be out by the time this comes out. So I think this won't give away everything, but I had Austin Buckner, one of my commentary partners that night. Laughing so hard, he had to stop and be like, God damn it. <laughs> because we were talking about those announcements. And mm. we were saying, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a solid number two show. And I said, yeah, because nobody likes a runny one. <laughs> yep, I slipped in a oh, yeah, I'll, joke I'll, on I'll my commentary. I probably would have just like took my thing off. I probably would have turned my head and just go, Oh my gosh. And then just go right back into it. Yep. Yep. No, okay. you're going to, you know, I figured, you know what, prepare yourself for uh, joining me because yeah, no, but I'm going to have more. Everybody's going to have to be prepared for you and I, Mo. They're going to have to be oh, prepared. Oh God. They have no idea. Oh, they have no idea. <laughs> and you know what? For, we got two people for color commentator. I don't know if I can break this part yet, but we do have a play-by-play -play guy for that show. Austin Buckner had mentioned at the end of the show that he will not be able to be there because, you know, anniversary weekend. It's understandable. Yep. But we do have somebody coming in for that show that I am fully confident will be do just as good at play by play. I'm Absolutely. excited. Oh yeah. Can't wait. Oh yeah. And you know, hell, there's gonna be talent from all over the Midwest. J much like we had yeah. as of this recording last night. And you know, I'm hearing there's gonna be, you know, some of the same people there. There's gonna even be some people making their first appearances. So, you know, once the dust finally settles from, you know, last night and putting the 
show together for, you know, everybody to watch. I believe it's going to be up on YouTube. I'm confident we're going to be starting to make some uh, announcements because I know that the venue has already been announced. So Mm -hmm. it's going to be a good time. Your birthday. Oh, yeah. It's the day before Veterans Day. You know, I don't got to worry about going into work the next day. It's going to be fine. It's going to be a fun old time. Dude, I don't either. I took that next day off. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going. You know, working working with uh, my job, I already had that day off. I was like, hey, I ain't got to worry about it. Yeah. Hey, there you go. And I don't. You'll see this in the video from last night. There is actually going to be two title matches in November. One of them being for uh, the Fight Against Suicide United States Championship. And, you know, you'll see, you'll get to see the belt watching back last night's show. Yeah. It's a nice looking belt. And, you know, Little, little hint. It's not your typical United States belt, you know, red, white, blue, all that. Yeah, but it's it's very fitting, very fitting, and still patriotic. That sort of thing. Lovely, lovely fucking belt. Okay, I can't wait to see that one. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a little altercation at the end of the battle royal that. Uh, you know, that's how all that got introduced, and that is going to be a fun match to call. That is one of the matches that uh, is on, and it's like Zachariah Creed versus Jack Darling. Oh, yeah, wow. and you know, you'll you'll get a view of Zachariah Creed um, once you watch back, but mm-hmm. he reminds me a lot right now of like like Will Hobbs. That same sort of jacked, oh, really? beefy build. Oh, yeah. Oh, it damn. It was a treat to watch. Ooh. All right. Now, I have two categories here. First one's a bit of a name game where I name off some people. You give me your quick thoughts on each of them. And, you know, I try to put it to a theme. And, you know, this last weekend was a big wrestling weekend, not only here locally, but even internationally with uh, AEW All In over there in Wembley Stadium. Mm-hmm. Each of these people have been on that were on that show, actually. One of them I've actually personally met, which that was an experience. Loved it. First one, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Ooh. What I say? Definitely want to say like kind of like a locker room leader. Oh, in definitely. Some, in some sort of way. Yeah, definitely a locker room leader for him. I mean, he's proven that since some of the chaos of about a year ago and then everything mm-hmm. now and you know I haven't got to watch everything yet because obviously I had to be there early for the show yesterday but yeah I didn't either I, I just did. got little bits of it so yeah, I, didn't watch the whole I gotta, thing either. I gotta watch zero hour on YouTube but yeah yeah I've seen pictures because you know that's the thing with social media. You can't go even a full 12 hours without the pictures getting out there. Yeah, like people taking pictures. Oh, look who came here. New yep. champ returns. Like, yeah, oh, I'd rather just know when I'm watching it rather than, you know, scrolling through my phone and then boom, first thing right there. I'm like, well, yeah, now I'm, that, now I'm that is the it. thing. But, you know, hell, even with that, It sometimes is still exciting to, even if you know what the end result is going to be. You don't know how the match went. Yeah, seeing how how it got to that conclusion is still pretty fun. Oh, yeah. 
And, you know, the next person on the list, the one that I actually got to meet, I actually have a figure signed by him back there. The guy that actually faced off against Brian Danielson yesterday, Swerve. Oh, definitely a character. I love Swerve. Absolutely. Oh. He's one of my favorites in AEW. Oh, yeah. Like, anytime Both. I hear his song, I'm just doing the whole thing. You know what I mean? Oh my god, it is still <laughs> on my bucket list to to do like next time I see Swerve anywhere, I hope like hell Prince Nana is there with him because I'm like, I have to do I don't I have to. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I loved it. the thing that I was thinking with him is it's often funny in wrestling how sometimes, you know, in front of the camera, the people that play the absolute biggest assholes, most sadistic sons of bitches, behind the camera, some of the nicest people ever. Mm-hmm. Word is definitely that. Yeah. Like, we've all seen what he can show in front of the camera on AEW recently from the hangman feud hell to the whole thing with Brian Danielson. He yeah. can be one sadistic son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one. Guy that made his debut at Wembley Stadium. The one... The only ricochet. I flyer. Oh, God. Just yeah. amazing. Amazing. The way he moves in the ring. It's like you have to be like full eyes on him. Like you blink, turn around, you're missing something. And he makes it look so easy. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Like you like definitely need to have that old school uh, don't try this at home thing with when it comes to him because you know there's going to be somebody that's like oh man that looks easy i'm gonna tr-. And the, uh. i do it all the time like when i so whenever i would you know watch the stuff or whatever and it says you know please do not try this at home i'm just like whatever i end up doing the same day or the next day i end up just doing the same shit oh yeah <laughs> it's like it's like they always joke that you try to tell a little kid not to do something, that is going to be the first thing they want to do. That they're going to, yeah, trust me. Oh, yeah. I know that with my three-year-old. Don't do this, don't do this. He's in, I'm doing it. I'm like, I'm I'm already, oh, God, going into that, I'm already prepared for, you know, my wife and I expecting. Which, I don't by know the if... way, congratulations, mm-hmm. Big Mo to you. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm a mix of excited and nervous. Oh, yeah? But uh, the nervous part, because I don't know if I told a whole lot of people this, but we had a little bit of a scare before the first ultrasound, where we were almost expecting there wasn't going to, like, we were going to go and they tell us there's it's not there anymore. Well, we okay. we get into the ultrasound, and she's looking, and I'm holding my breath, like, I almost wanted to scream, say something. Right, yeah. And they're like but just then, so silent. Oh, yeah. That that silence was driving me nuts. Oh, yeah, it would. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she's like, because, okay, with IVF, we had some testing done. We already knew what the gender was. I don't know. Oh, some, some, my wife knows more about all that shit than I do. All I knew was we we knew because of the testing as soon as they implanted the embryo what it was. But I was mm-hmm. like holding my breath and all of a sudden she says, you know, he's being a little bit of a pain right now. And I'm like, <clears throat> what? You're so they're there though. And then, you know, I didn't see anything until they handed me the the picture they give you to my wife Mm -hmm. i just looked at it and said don't you scare me like that again (laughs) yeah no shit it's usually like when it's that silence you you don't know like what's gonna happen it could be good it could be bad and you're just like 
you start stimulating over your head, and you're just like, what the fuck, what the fuck? What yeah, fuck? I was like, say something. Even mm-hmm. if you're just telling me you're looking, say something. Right. <laughs> but then I remember talking with one of my coworkers, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to be in for it. I'm going to have a hide-and-seek champion on my hands right now. Yeah? Shit. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's, you know, that whole thing where, you know, you you hear some parents joke about, you know what? I hope when you have kids, you have one just like you. All the time. My mom and will tell yeah. me that. My Nana will. And I was like, no, I'm sure it won't be that bad. This kid is doing the same things that my nana and mom told me that I did when I was his agent. I was like, oh, shit. Yep, I, I'm preparing myself for that right now. <laughs> yeah, and they'll just sit in the back, and then they just be like, I told you so. Yep, you did this, you did that. And I was like. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, last but not least on this name game category. The Dr. Britt Baker, and you know I got to do it, D-M-D. It's almost a sin if you don't do it like that. Right. Yeah, so you got to do the D-M-D. Um, I'd say workhorse. Don't. For totally. The women in AEW, for the women in AEW, definitely a workhorse. No, it won't. For the women there in health, for the whole damn roster in general, I mean, hell, yeah. she's a perfect example of, you know, being able to still have a career outside and juggling them both. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, still, you know what, I'm trying to remember. I've only ever been to two AEW shows, one in Kansas City, one over in Council Bluffs, and... yep. Hmm. I am trying to remember if Britt Baker was on any of them. The one in Council Bluffs, I did go to that one, and I don't think she was on that one. Yeah, I don't believe she was there. Mm -mm. We did get to see Athena and Billy Starks, which was nice, although it was just a talking segment, but still. Yeah, that was still pretty cool, though. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I'm trying to think, because I know the one in Kansas City I went to was the one where they had uh, the Kingo versus Kenny Omega. Was that last year or maybe the year before? It was, the one in Kansas City. It was. It wasn't the last one they had in Kansas City, but it was like, yeah, it was maybe a year or two ago. Okay. I don't. I don't know. Was she at that one? I probably have to go back and look at it. Yeah, I'd I'd have to go back and look, but still, oh, absolute workhorse. Yeah. All right. So now. I have some random questions. Some might be wrestling related. Some might not be. Some might have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about. All right. All right. So first one, one that I love to lead off with because it, it definitely leads into some entertaining stories. Okay. So I have to spin it, you know, for ring announcing, but what is, one of the craziest moment in ring moments that you've been there to witness, you know, ring announcing. Oh, I say for me, ring announcing there. Um, I would definitely say it was a Fowler versus Mike Bennett that mm. we had in February. Um, oh, yeah, abs- absolutely love that one, and that was a crazy good match. Um, one out, uh, another one. I think it was Fowler and Bogot, and I was oh that that their street table fight they had yeah, and I mean that it was just right there. My table was close by, and I even just like got up with everybody. I was like, holy shit, holy shit, and fucking just jumped up, holy shit. <laughs> so for the ones of oh. me announcing, those two have definitely got to be the ones. Oh yeah, or, no, actually Hard a third one. Um, it was in January of this year when we had a uh, former NXT star, Dan Matha, 
and Jamison McGregor. Talk oh, about yeah. big men going. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, uh, to quote Big E, big meaty men slapping meat. For real. Yeah, for real. That was a big one. I actually, I really enjoyed that one. But I was just like crazy. Like the way that Dan Matha just lifts McGregor up, like no other, just throwing him around. I was like, shit. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to be at that one, but I believe that was the one where it was like a crazy freaking blizzard out. And like I tried going, but then it was like I started slipping around. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go back. Yep. That was the, uh, yeah, we still had. Wasn't too bad of a blizzard, but we still had little bits of it. The roads were still uh, really, really, really icy. Um, and then the day before, my dumbass drove to Lincoln to SmackDown, telling everybody, "Nope, I'm going. I bought tickets. I'm going." Mm-hmm. And I drove on that. Had a couple of uh, oh shit moments driving up there. But, oh, I can imagine. Oh yeah, and then, like we couldn't see shit. There was just white everywhere from the wind blowing the snow everywhere. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Hell, I've done that just driving across Omaha. Conveniently enough, going to a SmackDown show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, <laughs> my wife had surprised me with tickets, and, like, we knew the weather was going to be crazy. And they, the friend I was going with and my wife were both trying to convince me, if the weather's crazy, it might be good not to go. And I'm like, God damn it. I think I know which one you're talking about because I went to that one. I Oddly enough, I think it was in January 2022. I believe it was that one. Right around there, yeah, probably. Yeah, because I came home from work uh, and I was my girl was texting me and she's like, are we still going? Are we going? Did you look outside? I'm you know what? I think we ran into each other on the way out. Yes, we did. So it was that one. Yeah. And then they had yep. Lita come and Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was that one. And uh, I was driving home from work, just snow heavy going. I was like, maybe I'm second guessing this. And I got like really cheap tickets last minute. And so I was like, okay, maybe we shouldn't go to this one. I was like, there's always going to be another one. Well, my girl was already ready. Our son was ready. We took him to, that was his first one. He was, a year old. So I wanted to take him to that. And I was like, I'm only just like 10 minutes just across the bridge. We'll just go really slow. I'm sure we'll be fine. And oh, yeah, yeah, we made it. Oh, yeah. that, was, that was a good one. I'm glad I didn't miss that one. Oh, yeah. No, it was definitely a good show. And, you know, I actually have a moment from the thing with the, the Fowler Mike Bennett match that there was a, little uh almost not really a pause but you know one of those matches where like they have a moment where the crowd just got done cheering really loudly and just quieted for a little bit and Mm -hmm. i'm like oh god i'm gonna do it i just yelled out and you could see him like put his head down and like I'm gonna and have to then look back he at that recorded one. a short little video with me after, and I, I was talking to him about that, and he was like, "Dude, you popped the hell out of me." And I'm like, "Yeah, yes, yep." I saw that video, and then when I watched that uh, the document and shit for that, and then that was the first thing I was like, "Oh, he got him to do it." That no, yeah, great. that's oh, great. I man. love that. Oh, that was something else. Now, next question I have here. Okay. It has come up, I believe it might have been uh, another podcast here in town, the Four and a Half Marks, that came up with this. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but kind of going along with this uh, acknowledge me thing, you know, acknowledge the conk. And it got me thinking, okay, who should we acknowledge between these three people? You, Roman Reigns, or Solo Sokoa? Oh, dude, it's obvious. Acknowledge the conk. No questions asked. <laughs> Love it. No, no questions asked. Acknowledge the conk. I like it. I like it. I, I, love I had somebody how- ask me about 
where our allegiances stood between, you know, Roman and Solo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a little backstory behind this. You know, you know those uh, wedding photos where it's like the groomsmen and they're opening the shirts and it's like the superhero logos? Yeah. For my wedding, though, I bought, uh, I believe it was a uh, Tomatonga uh, Bullet Club shirt. And I had all my groomsmen open it as that. Oh, did you? And Tomatonga actually acknowledged it and uh, retweeted it, calling us, you know, they were called the, uh, they were called the Firing Squad. So he just hashtagged it F Squad. And I'm like, yes. Nice. Nice. So I, Going into that friend of mine that asked me about that because he was one of my groomsmen there, and I said, "You know what? My allegiance lies with Tama, so I guess I'll go with Solo." <laughs> well, it's funny how all of that, uh, all that just happened. The agnostic Kong. I think there was a picture that was taken. Yeah, and... where you're doing the. Yeah, doing you know the one fall. I mean, that's just now become a thing. You know, the one fall, everybody's holding the ones. And uh, I didn't think of it when I got received the picture. I was like, "Oh, that's a really cool picture." You know, everybody doing one fall. And then uh, one of the marks, the four and a half marks video. One of them was like, "Well, starting off with the show with imagining Alex Conk, I acknowledge the Conk." And then I was like, "No, it's the Conk. Let's do some of that." And then that photo came back up, and I was like, "Perfect." Everybody's got their ones. Acknowledge the con. Yeah, that definitely, definitely fitting and odd how it, yeah, definitely odd how it came up. But how it all came together. Pretty, oh, yeah, how it all came together. It's pretty cool. And mm. yeah, I just, oh, God, I was trying, I lost my train of thought. That's what happens on this fucking show. I get on a tangent and then I just freaking <laughs> all of a sudden, you get me going, God fucking damn it. Oh, shit. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> hey, yeah. I've had people ask me if, you know, are we able to cuss on the show? And I'm like, you've heard of the term talking like a sailor? Well, you're talking to one, so I kind of got a, <laughs> I got a reputation to live up to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I got it. And I mean, Okay, I've I've had people try to tell me that I need to watch my language, including my mom on a Facebook post for one of my Navy friends one time. So, you know, me being the little shit I can be sometimes, I went, I deleted that comment, and then I went and found a music video on YouTube that was nothing but cuss words, and I posted that on my page. Did she yeah. ever find out what it is towards her? Mm. I don't know if she ever saw <laughs> that, but I mean, I I, I imagine so. You right. know, it pops up on her news feed, you know, oh, Grant Morton, but he posted because, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Bad. Am my, Ask me if I really care. My folks, they'll do that some of the times. I just tell them, sorry. It just comes out. Oh, yeah. Last time any either of them tried, I just went, well, fuck, 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 fuck. Yep, there you go. And I, hell, my wife has even talked to me about some of the times that I cuss. And I'm like, it's for emphasis, damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. Hobbies that you have I guess really the only thing that I got for hobbies is uh, I was going to say I guess just collecting stuff I guess wrestling stuff in general that's really all I do um, I I know it sounds like a boring thing but like er I mean everybody asks do you have any like other interests there's stuff you like other stuff you want to do no it's literally just wrestling like you know, if there's like a thing, you look blood, just wrestling, just blood filled everywhere. I was like, it's just wrestling stuff. Oh, yeah. No, and I, I mean, can, I can get this you there. Is, 
this is just, this is nothing. Unfortunately, our apartment walls are too small. I have 30 other shit in my closet. I just have no other room to hang it. So I'm just like, fuck. So right now it's on hold for collecting stuff until we get a house or a bigger apartment. But once we get bigger stuff, oh yeah, it just keeps going. It keeps going. Like I'll say, yep, there you go. (laughs) And that's not even all of it. I got like a tub full of Funkos behind me here. (laughs) Or in front of me, I guess. But yeah. And then, you know, oh God. Uh, But autograph stuff, oh, yep. I got plenty of uh, revolver event posters signed by most of the card. I I need to go to one of those. Revolver show. They're like a damn party the whole fucking time. That's what I've heard. I know. uh, I know some. uh, Some of the guys that I'm friends with, they on Facebook, they go and they're like, "You should come to one." Well, I would if it would line up with my work and don't have to mandatory me all the damn time. But that, that, and you know, I imagined because there have been revolver shows that line up pretty much the same night as Magnum one, so it's like. Yep. Well, you're getting booked at one, so you kind of got to go to that. One. Yep. Yep. I think, I think the last two, yeah, just you know, did Magnum thing. There's always another revolver because it seems oh, like yeah. pretty much come to Clive frequently. Oh, pretty frequently. They, I mean, they're venturing out more, but it seems like for the most part they've been flip flopping between Ohio and De- the Des Moines area. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's going to be times where you'll find one that'll work out. Iowa's getting something. That's the way we're looking at it. Midwest is getting something. Hell, most (laughs) of the vast majority of my figures that I have signed have all been from Revolver. Really? Including these last two that I've even had to start going the second shelf down. You know, with Dan Housen and Matt Cardona. Yeah. I'm really hoping we get him on Magnum one day. Really hoping. That's one of the names. Schedule, I don't yeah. like, honestly, I would love to see it because I don't want to get in twisted that I don't want to see it. Right. It's yeah. just seeming with his schedule, it's like, okay, there's two people in, res- in independent wrestling that I say are like a goddamn machine with the schedules they keep. And he's Matt one Cardona being one of them. And oh, then yeah. uh, John Wayne Murdoch. Yep. Absolute yeah. machines. It took me a little over a year to finally get the John Wayne Murdoch one nailed down. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, but hey, we got it done. And he was an absolute pleasure to work with. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. But yeah, much like you, I also collect a lot of, you know, things, a lot of autograph stuff. I have, I actually, back when uh, Mid-Death Pro did their first show here in Omaha, Mm -hmm. I went, and my ticket was uh, also an entry into a raffle for an event news item signed by everybody. I didn't know it that I won until Carver comes up to me after the show and hands me half a door. (laughs) I literally got it behind the camera here and just knocked something down, but I got it behind the camera here and there's still some blood spots on there. There's like a huge ass crack in there. Ass crack. (laughs) Yeah, I I did that. But uh, (laughs) the first time my wife saw that there was, she saw it. She's like, "Is that blood on there?" And I just laughed and said, hey, "Yeah, yeah, no, it's ketchup. It's just then, really, really old ketchup." <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I even, I even like collecting autograph stuff from outside of wrestling. Perfect example. Um, you might remember when. Uh, oh God, I'm trying to remember how many years ago this was, but when. Dirks Bentley did a show at Stir Cove. Yep. I was there. Were you? And I wanted to see how close I could get, so I was crazy early. I got like 
two people from the stage. Nice. And there, there was a point where he was asking where his beer drinkers were at. So I'm holding up one just screaming, and then he's pointing down at me, and I'm like, looking around like he is pointing to somebody else. Right. Before like, I know it, he's helping me over the barricade, and I end up shotgunning a beer on stage with him. No shit. And at the end, he, well, towards the end, he goes and grabs a guitar from one of his guitar players that he was, like, playing at the time. Mm -hmm. And he starts motioning for something to write with. And I'm like, no. No way. He walks over and hands it to me. And I have a signed Dirk Bentley electric guitar hanging up on my wall back there. Holy shit. That must have been really fucking cool. So, yeah, I was hoping somebody would get pictures because I didn't think anybody would believe me. Right. But, hell, I didn't even get to tell my family because th- some people that my brother knew were there that night and they mm-hmm. took pictures and my now sister-in-law was like, is that your brother? Five minutes before I called them. And look, cool little thing. You know, I don't know how it gets much cooler than that, but I still have the can. Oh, nice. Well, that's a really old Bud Light can. <laughs> so it must have been years ago. Then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess, yeah, lots yeah, of that's, stuff. I guess, yeah, that's other things that I would collect other than wrestling stuff. Like, um, anytime I go to concerts and stuff and if they have signed stuff, um, my, we went to a, uh, breaking Benjamin and Daughtry concert. Oh yeah. I took her, she wanted to go to that one. So she got a drumstick. It's hanging up like on this corner of the wall here. So she's got that one. So I, I mean, guitar picks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a, son of a bitch. She's lucky. We were, we, uh, I love Skillet. They're my favorite mm. band. And we went to a Skillet concert. We were second row and, and uh, they were throwing out picks. Could have swore I caught one. I guess I didn't. And then she comes up to me and she's like, I was like, <laughs> you love her. <laughs> but I I've, guess uh, I've had times like that. Hell, I even had yeah. one concert where I was like a little like, ah, oh, damn, I didn't get one. And then on my way out, I look down on the floor and all of a sudden there's one just laying there. Just I'm laying like, there. I'm like, mine. But right? Yeah. But we're but gonna yeah. uh, we're gonna go to a skillet concert in uh, in October and uh nice. we got a thing to where there's like a signed poster and stuff like that. So Okay. So I'm excited to have that one hung up. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to because you brought up Daughtry. I actually saw him at the Iowa State Fair once and I they at the merch table they had a signed poster from you know him and the whole band Mm -hmm. so i just i just need to get it framed up and get it probably hanged up right somewhere near the guitar over there yeah a lot of people uh they gave me shit for this when i took her and they're like oh you're going to see daughtry i didn't know who daughtry was never heard of them and my mom's like that's bullshit because you were in the car you were like 10 something like that and he was playing on the radio you never you never heard this song nope but then out here I am, I'll listen to some of his songs now. Yeah. I mean, I haven't listened to some of his newer stuff, but oh I've definitely I've seen him in concert. Good stuff. Not 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 bad. All oh, right. Yeah. Now I have to ask this because with a name of a show like I have, I it feels like it would be a sin if I didn't. Favorite drink, whether alcoholic or non, or shit on age. Okay, so I'll give you two. Alcohol wise, uh, Miller Lite, hundred percent, hundred percent Miller Lite. Uh, Bud Light, there'll be a few times, but hundred percent Miller Lite. Uh, non alcohol. Hey, that's what I was drinking. Hey, uh, non alcohol. Shout out to all my Dr Pepper fans. Yes. yes. Even more of a reason why <laughs> yeah. we get along so well. My wife says that I am a Dr Pepper fiend, and I got a problem. I tell her. <laughs> As long as I got some, I don't got a problem. Fuck yeah. Dude, I'm like, 
with my lunches every day, Dr. Pepper. My dinner every day, Dr. Pepper. I same. fucking love it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolute same. <laughs> Although, I don't know if you've tried this, though, with Dr. Pepper. Because I stumbled on it one time. Just like, there, I grabbed a Dr. Pepper from the fridge. And I had, you know, a leftover shooter bottle of uh, Jack Honey. I'm like, dump it in there. Oh, my God. It was so good. Was it? I'm going to have to try it then. No, I haven't tried it. We'll have to try it now. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. For me, obviously, (laughs) non-alcoholic Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty much, I got my favorites, but I'm pretty much an equal opportunity beer drinker. You put it in front of me and tell me to (laughs) drink it. You're (laughs) going to drink it? (laughs) Yeah, somebody, oh, hell, going back to last night. During the opening Battle Royal, uh, my commentary partner was asking me if, you know, I, I hear you're a betting man. And I'm, I literally looked over. I'm like, I think you confuse betting man with drinking man because I'm definitely a drinking man. <laughs> yeah, not so much a gambler. Yeah. Last not time either. I tried it, no, did not end up good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you're not going to find me at the casinos in Council Bluffs too much. So yeah, I don't know. I like. Well, I mean, sure, like everybody when they you know get to the age to where they can't do it. Oh, I'm going to try once. Yeah. I did have the thought, but then like when I find out like you know what it really is, I'm just like, it's not worth it. Yeah. Every once in a while, just for shits and giggles, but... If you have, like, extra money to spend or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You you take specifically that money, and once that's gone, or you hit a certain time, and you're like, okay, I'm leaving, then whatever. But some people just can't turn that There's some people that'll fucking... It's fine. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, last but not least here best advice you have or maybe best advice you've been given for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? Um, The best advice that I can give is, um, you know, not to quote John Cena, but I mean, legit, never give up. Don't give up. You know, you know, if you got a dream, shoot for it. You're going to have roadblocks down the road. It happens, but once you get past those, it's all you're like cloud nine after that. So definitely, oh, yeah. uh, don't don't give up on anything. You know, get back if you feel like you're fall like failing or falling down. Get back up on your feet. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, advice that's been given to me. Funny and ironic. Don't shit the bed. <laughs> don't, don't don't shit the bed. That's I'm fun. sure if he, I'm sure if he watches this, he knows who he is. Don't shit the bed. I can think of a few people that might have said that. Yep. All right. Well, before we go, where can people find you, social media wise, or you know, I'm definitely gonna tag uh, Magnum Wrestling in this too, so everybody follows them and pays attention to what they got going on. But as far as you, if you got anywhere, you know, you want to plug, now's your chance. Um, so I got just Facebook and Instagram, nothing too crazy. Uh, Facebook, it's just Alex, A-L-E-X, and last name Konkin, K-O-N-K-E-N. Um, Instagram, it's all lowercase, alexj.conk. All right. Yeah, we'll get all that in the description as well as information for Magnum Wrestling, because I love highlighting independent wrestling all over the country. And, you know, it also a little soft spot for places local to me. So, mm-hmm. love oh, that. yeah. Local wrestling, independent wrestling now, it is so good. It is so good right now. I mean, just the world of wrestling right now, mm. it, it's hot and it's going to get hotter. I just oh. I I know next year it's gonna be on fire. So oh, like now yeah. is the time to either, you know, if you've been a fan and you kind of just stepped away, 
and now it's the time to get back into it watching you know televised or independent and then you know new fans too now is literally the time oh yeah and i always you know before we go we'll send off with this the thing that i like to uh talk about you know with people getting into watching wrestling i'm like watch a match and without knowing anything about the person just pick one cheer for that one and i almost guarantee you you will start getting into it because you'll just start getting invested in that person and then you're like oh i also see that person and yeah it's a snowball right absolutely absolutely all right. Well, that is about all I have. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. Best mm-hmm. of luck out there, you know, Magnum Wrestling. And, you know, once again, I look forward to working with you November 10th for Fight Against Suicide, the show we're calling 21 Gun Salute. Awesome. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to join the commentary team with you out there, Big Mo. And, uh, yeah, just cannot wait for. Next month, over the top Magnum Wrestling uh, tickets are still available right now, and uh, they're going they're going pretty fast. So make sure you get those, and also get tickets for Fight Against Suicide Twenty One Gun Salute Two on your Shirley's birthday, November tenth. So make sure you yes, get those. Yes, come out and celebrate the big man's birthday. But yes, support independent wrestling wherever you're at. Well, that is about all I have. Again, thank you so much. <laughs>